but uh, country risk. So we have uh, country and political risk. So first let's talk about political risk. So there's a strong relationship between politics and business success. We, talk, we just saw an example in Switzerland where they suddenly changed the policy. Okay, do you understand policy? Yes. We talk about policy, we're talking about rules and regulations and ways of doing things. Do you understand ways of doing something? So the government changes the way they always do something. They change their policy. So we do some political risk analysis. And this means that some political decision or event will affect the companies in that country. So our company could lose money or not make as much money okay, because of some political event in a country. So country risk analysis is larger than political risk. Country risk is also talking about economic and financial information. Okay? So country risk political, economic and financial to give a complete picture of the risk for the country. So this is kind of severe type of political risk. These four very rarely happens. Okay. So uh, can you put away your phone? The class has restarted. Right. So first one is inconvertibility. That means that the money I make from the country is not convertible. If you get uh, go to North Korea, you make a lot of North, do business, make a lot of North Korean won. Right. You're really happy, throwing up all the one in the air, I'm really rich, <laughs> right? Even as rich as Kim Jong-un, right? <laughs> Got all his money, or you steal all his money from Kim Jong-un. What can you do with the Korean one when you go to the South Korea, with the North Korean one? Nothing, it's inconvertible, right? So sometimes the, co the government doesn't allow you to exchange their money or they changed the rules, so you can't exchange their money, but that's a very severe case for small countries, right? Expropriation or nationalization, this happened in Venezuela recently. Venezuelan government said, this uh, company is now our, belongs to the government, right? So some foreign company was doing business in Venezuela, and the government just said, I'm taking your company, okay? Do you understand? Yes. Maybe they made some excuse. You're charging too high price to the people, right? Or you did some fraud, so I'm taking over your company. It belongs to the Venezuelan government now. Okay, war damage. Uh, we can get some damage in the war in Syria or other places, right? Civil strife, like somebody is doing some demonstration or that kind of thing. War is a political risk. Yes, war is a political risk. Also, the demonstration or fighting inside the country is also civil strife. If we think about it in Africa, many African countries like the Congo, do you know the Congo? Yes, yes. The largest United Nations peacekeeping force is in the Congo, in South Africa, right? Always has some, has some risk, a lot of risk. But there's a big industry in the Congo, like diamonds. Do you understand diamonds? Yes. Congo has a lot of resources. So many companies go there to do business, even though has these kind of problems. Okay? <clears throat> so we can get uh, risk insurance companies. So we can buy insurance. If the government nationalizes your company, I can buy insurance against that. Right? It's one way of dealing with that uh, problem. Okay? They can also insure you against the contract repudiation. So sometimes you make a contract with the government and then the government says, no, I'm not paying you the money. What are you going to do then? I don't want to give me the Business to government is a big business, right? Let's say you make the uniforms for the army. Or you provide the government with some telecommunication equipment. And then the government says, I'm not paying you. <laughs> Let's say you sell it to some country in Africa and they say, I'm not paying you now. Why? What can you do? Take them to what court? What international court? Which international court? I invest the world court. I invest the world. I invest the US government. 
Maybe it's in their country, right? They're, what's their judge going to say? What's the judge going to decide? Is he going to decide my government is correct? Or the company is correct? No. Maybe he'd be biased, right? Of course, the judiciary is separate from the government, right? But they may be easily biased, okay? So that's a problem. We can get insurance against that. Government can make equity restriction, repatriation restriction, taxation discrimination. They can suddenly change the tax because your company is a foreign company, right? Whatever you're producing, the government can change the tax suddenly. Non-tariff barriers like uh, health and safety, payment delays. They can delay the payment. Other uh, problems we can have, kidnapping. Do you understand kidnapping? Yes. For example, in South America, some Colombia, there was a lot of kidnappings before, right? Uh, strike or sabotage. Also in Nigeria, they have kidnapping of the, if you go there to work on the oil, you can be kidnapped, right? Or the Middle East. Do you want to get kidnapped in the Middle East? <laughs> no, it's not going to be good, right? We can have some strike or sabotage for political reason. So in Japan and China had some dispute over an island. Some Japanese factory was sabotaged in China, right? Japanese company was doing business in China. Some people set fire to their factory. Do you understand sabotage? That kind of thing because of the political problem. Uh, lack of enforcement of copyright agreements. So some countries have a different idea of law. Is law the same in every country in the world? No. no. For example, in Asia, they have, and China, they have more Confucianism, where they think people should just share, right? Whereas in the U.S., the law is more based on it wants to incentivize you, right? If you make a good invention, you should be able to make billions of dollars. <coughs> Okay, if we don't allow people to make billions of dollars after they make a new invention, then they're just going to sit at home and do nothing, right? So the US says we need strong copyright law. But China says people should share their idea for the good of humanity. Do you understand that? Yes. It's more Asian type of thinking, right? We should share our intellectual property with everybody. <laughs> so that's a philosophical debate, but different in the legal system, okay? U.S. system, stronger on copyright. Chinese system, weaker on copyright. Okay. So, some countries might not enforce our copyright. Hollywood has a big problem in China, for example. Right? People don't buy the movies because they can buy them much cheaper. Government can interfere in their operations. Bribery or systematic corruption. So, we, we might be upfront and honest, and we try to make a contract with uh, I'm just picking countries randomly, right? Let's say we make a contract with Somalia. Somalian government, and we want to make a contract to sell them some nuclear power plant, right? Maybe Korea is good at nuclear power. But at the last minute, the Iranian nuclear power plant was chosen. <laughs> their quality is a lot lower than yours. Their price is more expensive. You've no idea. Why did it happen? Bribery. Bri probably bribery, right? So then you, if you can prove the bribery, you can get paid insurance money, okay? You spend a lot of time and effort to make this deal, but you are lost because of bribery. Uh, we can see that some countries have the higher corruption than other countries, right? That's taken into account. Especially if we look at the international organization like FIFA, right? FIFA is dealing with 190 countries around the world. So if we think of the developed countries, they have a different standard of corruption than the developing countries, right? Not just general, generally. So each country gets one vote in FIFA. So recently FIFA was in trouble because they were selling their votes, right? Some people were selling their votes uh, for getting it. But of course, we, c we can generalize, but also s one of the main people in trouble is from Switzerland, the president, Sepp Blatter, right? Switzerland, traditionally very low corruption country. But Sepp Blatter is from Switzerland, so we can't always say, right? So sometimes we can make the generalization, but uh, we can get some refund there. <laughs> so this kind of obvious, this is an obvious risk. Do you understand obvious? More obvious risk, we can get insurance. But less obvious, obvious risk, we can't really get insurance, right? So uh, this is the EIU. The EIU we're going to look at in a while, Economist Intelligence Unit, 
They call this kind of risk policy risk, breaking the contract, restricting on the transfer of profits. So I made a big profit in your country, but I'm not allowed to transfer all the money. You don't allow me. Civil disturbance, regulatory restriction. You understand regulation. Governments not honoring agreements. Governments don't always honor the agreements. Government might change. Okay. Sometimes it's like a 33% extra tax, according to the EIU. So it can be a big risk for companies. So managing risks. One way is we can ignore the risk and accept them as necessary and just make financial way of dealing with the risk, right? So for example, we're investing in Brazil. We add 15% to the discount rate that we need to pass, the hurdle rate we need to pass. We have an investment in Brazil. We think it's going to make a 20% profit. Okay? Our cost of capital, cost of capital is 10%. We're going to make a 20% profit. Normally that's okay, right? It costs us 10% to get the money. We make a 20% profit. Okay? Income. So in between we're going to make 10%. But then we say, oh, it's in Brazil. So we think country risk for Brazil is equal to 15% of our profit. So we're not going to take this project. Okay? 15% is higher than 10. Do you understand? So that's one way, dealing with it in a financial way. So one way we can get this number is by looking at the bond, right? What's the credit risk on the bond, okay? And I'm working off that kind of information. We can make a kind of financial hedging. But we can also, so that's just ignoring it, doing nothing about it, and just adding on, saying we're not going to Brazil unless we make a really big profit. We're not going to Brazil, right? The second way is we try to Modify the arrangement, like closing the factory until the problems go away. Okay, so just change things. We may choose to go to a different country. We may try to negotiate a better deal with the government. Or we may try to do our own direct action, like hire bodyguards or security force. Right? 200 years ago, the British Indian Company had their own army. It was one of the biggest multinationals in the world. They went to war with the Indian government, right? British company. So some companies can hire their own security and so on to avoid that kind of thing. Uh, develop alliances within the country, make a good relationship with the government. Or we said this one, purchase the insurance. Purchase the risk insurance. So uh, we're going to give some tips about how to manage this kind of risk, right? It's hard to hedge the policy risk. So we're going to look at some examples here. So, in the Asian crisis, uh, some governments in Asia, they renegotiated the contract. Because they had a crisis, they didn't pay back the contract. Okay? Uh, so I made a contract with the government, they just say, no, I'm not paying you. Right? Then, do you know Georgia? The Georgian government made a deal with a US electricity company. Okay? So the, U the U.S. electricity company was selling their electricity in Georgia. Okay? So then the, co the companies, some big companies in Georgia, stopped paying the U.S., stopped paying the bills to the U.S. company. So the U.S. company said to the Georgian government, cut their electricity. We have to cut their electricity, right, until they pay the bill. But the Georgian government didn't agree, right? So they were getting the free electricity that the U.S. company set up and paid for and everything, right? Then the government refused to cut off the electricity. What can the U.S. company do? 200 years ago, the British company went to war with the Indian government. They had their own army. Does the U.S. electricity company have their own army? No. No, right? They can't go to war with the Georgian government and cause them. Okay, maybe they just have to leave or that kind of thing, right? But anyway, they already invested a lot of money, so they lost a lot of money. So we can see these kind of, it's hard to deal with this kind of risk. Insurance is very expensive. We can get insurance, but it's very expensive, just for a short time. Or sometimes it doesn't exist. In this case, with the Georgian government, there's no specific insurance policy to say that if, you, if they don't pay their bill and the government doesn't cut the electricity, right? So it's hard to find. So we can manage it ourselves. So here's some tips. First one is investing in goodwill. 
Do you understand the goodwill? So making good relationship, goodwill. So this company, ADS, American company investing in Brazil, they, they cut 40% of the staff and they made a big profit, right? They said, we don't need all of this staff, so let's cut the staff and then we can make a bigger profit, okay? But what happened? They got some negative publicity. Okay, do you understand negative publicity? Yes. Right? So when they wanted to make the next contract with the government, they didn't get the contract. On the other hand, this Italian-owned company stayed in Brazil. Brazil had some crisis, and the company, even though Brazil had a crisis, they stayed in Brazil. And they made a long-term relationship with Petrobras. Petrobras is Brazilian oil company. Okay? So Italy got the contract. They made a better relationship. Okay? Do you understand that idea? Yes. US company just comes there, cuts all the jobs, makes the people feel bad. Italian company comes there, there's a crisis, they stay in Brazil during the crisis, don't change their policy, make a good relationship in Brazil, then uh, this can help us to have a better relationship with the government. Framing. Framing the debate is putting the debate in the, making your point in the correct way. Do you understand the frame? Yes. Picture frame? So we want to make our point in a good way to the government. So do you know SK and KT? Yes. Are you SK or KT? KT. Anybody LG? Just one? <laughs> one person? Hands up KT? Hands up SK? Hands up LG? Three. Right? So SK and KT had a very big power in the market. Okay? So S LG asked for the special government regulation to help them to be more com competition in the telecom market. Okay? So Korea, does the Korean government want more competition or less competition? Less competition. Wants less competition, higher prices for the people? More competition. It wants more competition, right? The companies want less competition, but the government wants more competition. Okay? So LG approached the government and they say, we know you want more competition, so can you make a special regulation to help us to join the market? Then we will join the market. We'll invest all the money and join the market. So the government made a law guaranteeing them a 20% market share. So we saw in the class about 20% of the students are using LG. Okay? So the government guaranteed them the 20% share, so the government helped them. So we have to make the right argument to the government. That helps. Okay. Finding the political pressure point. Do you guys do Taekwondo? Yes. Who does Taekwondo? Hands up. Just one person in the Korean class. <laughs> Nobody else does Taekwondo? Why not? Hmm? Don't do Taekwondo? Too old. Too old? Taekwondo's for kids. <laughs> what color is your belt? Red? Red belt, is that okay? In the middle? Where is people's pressure points? Do you learn in Taekwondo about pressure points or is that Aikido? Where are the pressure points? If you press the point, people will get a lot of pain. Taekwondo doesn't do that. Taekwondo is just dancing around and doing Don't touch the other person. But you do massage in Korea as well. Where is the pressure point? Here? Do you know where the pressure points are? To make people pain? No? Okay. Anyway, we have to find the pressure point for the government, right? Some point that you press and the government can feel the pain. So, Amy again, this Italian company. Do you know Kazakhstan? Yes. Have you watched Borat? Borat, uh -huh. the movie? Yes. Kazakhstan is really like that. In the movie, Borat is a real person. Do you know Borat? No? It's a funny movie. You can watch, you can search on Google, Borat, after your exams, right? Or finish. He's a guy, English guy, who pretends he's from Kazakhstan. He makes fun of Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan government was not happy, very angry. Right? About the movie. Why are you laughing? You know the movie? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So it makes out that Kazakhstan is a very backward country, right? But it's not that backward, really. 
But anyway, this company in Kazakhstan, they made the construction of libraries and schools, right? Because the country needs that kind of thing. Okay? So when they did, they found out that this is what the country really needs. So when they start to do that, they make a good relationship. LG in uh, Korea, they agreed to use the Samsung's technology, right? LG was deciding, should I use Apple's technology or Samsung's technology, right? So they know that the Korean government wants to create a job in Samsung, right? So they found the pressure point of Korean government, okay? They said, we will create, we will create uh, more jobs in Samsung because we will use Samsung's technology. Then please give us the license to give us the 20% market share. Do you understand? Yes. So they find a point to press the government. Another thing we can do is these days data collection. Have you heard of big data? Yes. Do you know anything about big data? The Seoul city used the big data to both routes, so they they made the night 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 bus. This means uh, many people want this route in in afternoon. So they oh, okay. make That's interesting, right? So the city can use that. Companies can also use this. Okay? How we can look at the radio and newspaper reports. Okay? Like uh, we can do with a consulting company. And the consulting company they browse through the red and they find how often our company was mentioned in the newspaper or radio report. Okay? So for example, we want to make a new mine. Do you understand the mine? It may cause some environmental damage. So we want to know what's the public reaction. So we can measure about how many times our company is mentioned in the same sentence as environmental damage or bad. We can link up the phrases and the words. Okay, so we can find out what is the people's attitude. People's attitude is really, really bad. Maybe we shouldn't start the mine. We're going to have a lot of opposition and maybe the government won't allow the mine. Okay? People's attitude is not that bad. They don't seem to be that opposing. Then maybe it will be okay. So we can use the data mining uh, to... Uh, this one is a little bit small, but we can also consult with the NGOs is a good idea. So we're going to make a not mine. We meet with the NGOs and we ask them, what's your problem? What is your issue? and then the NGO tells us the issue, and then we solve the issue, then is the NGO going to make any demonstration? If we solve the issues? So our problem is that the NGO is going to lobby the government. Do you understand lobby? Yes. They're going to lobby the government. Don't give them the license. Don't allow them to open the mine, right? It's going to damage the environment. But if we meet with the NGO, and they tell us what the issues are, like they say, oh, the birds are going to die, right? And then we make some way to look after the birds. We say, no, because we're going to make a special lake just for the birds, so the birds are not going to die. Do you understand? Yes. Then the NGO is happy. Is the NGO going to lobby the government? No, right? They're happy. We solve their issue. So uh, we can consult the experts. We're going to look at the Economic Intelligence Unit. He says, we have data mining of online news and bloggers. So this company, a Russian company, uh, they were going to start mine. They put these words into the internet to see how many times does that come out in the same sentence. Russia, this company, a protest, right? If, the, if that's coming out a lot, we can have a problem. So they can do that kind of thing for Facebook, right? Uh, companies can blogs, Facebook, Twitter, find out what people are writing about things on Facebook or Twitter quite easily. Okay? Uh, so, another way is a tummy test. Do you understand tummy? This is your tummy. So we just apply our past experience to the current situation. So tummy just means how do you feel? Do you understand? How do I feel here? Does it feel good or feel bad? So, just somebody who has that kind of experience, we just ask them, what do you feel? How do you feel about this? Do you think it's risky or not? 
Another way is game theory. Have you studied about game theory? Yes. What is game theory? How does game theory work? Uh, there are people who have a kind of conflict and how they act They are players. There are some players, player A and player B and player C, and what happens? They have some issue to yes. conflict about, and how can they do this effectively? Okay, so each person acts in their own interest, right? Mm -hmm. In game theory, people act in their own interest, like capitalism. So act in their own interest. So where are they going to go, right? A is going to go here, B is going to go here, C is going to go here. Okay, so in the end, we're going to end up with a decision here. If everybody acts in their own interest, so the politician, what does the politician want? Votes, right? They want votes, they want to keep the people happy. Okay, what does the other person want? What, what do they want? What does the NGO want? Okay, what does the other companies want? So we put all together, what do people want? Every actor moves according to their interest. What is going to be the combined outcome? If everybody acts according to their interest, what is going to be the outcome? Okay? You can also use this theory for climate change, for <coughs> analyzing the climate change. So just to sum up, on hedging the policy risk, we can combine data mining, find the data, right? And we can find use a model like the game theory or the coming test or so on. It can help us to manage the policy risk in the government. And we can get some advantage by doing this. Okay? So we can go back and we can follow these steps, invest in goodwill, make a framing debate, find the political pressure point for the government, collect the data. So combine all these things together, right? These can help us to get an advantage over other companies in that we can deal with, we can manage with the risk that the government is going to make a, a regulation or the rule against, which can harm the company. So do you have any question about managing the, managing the risk? So we have this kind of severe risk, which is, we're not worried about that much, it's very rare. Maybe just one or two country like Venezuela, right? We can cover that maybe with insurance or, or so on. But then we have this kind of policy risk, right? Government change the policy and affects our company. And policy risk is more complicated. So we need to deal with the policy risk direct ourselves by these things, okay? So then discuss with your partner, how are you going to deal with the policy risk? We mentioned here four main ways. So what are the four main ways? Explain the four main ways of dealing with policy risk in the government. Can you remember the four ways? Kim Sang-hee, 
what are the four ways that we mentioned we can manage the policy risk, government changing the policy badly for us? <coughs> Okay. Can you give an example? It doesn't have to be from here, you can just think of any example. How can we make a good will with the government? How do you think you can make goodwill with the government? You're working for the company and you want to make a good relationship with the government. How do you think you can make a good relationship with the government? Flowers, send flowers to the government. Make some profits for government. Okay, help the government in their aim, whatever their aim is, right? Don't leave the country if they have a problem, right? Creating jobs, you just mentioned before, creating jobs, right? Uh, being fair to the people. In one company, they just cut a lot of jobs to make the profit, right? So thinking about being fair to the people, not just creating profits, okay? Uh, that can make a better relationship. Okay, that's two. So then let's ask somebody else for the next two. So trade team in. What are the other two things? Um, yes, data collection. Can you give an example of data collection? Using LinkedIn. Yeah, how, you mean? using the internet, that kind of thing. We can find some companies that can help us with that, right? And last one. Framing the debate. So can you give an example of framing? in the right way. So for example, I'm a government, what kind of argument would you make to me? asking me to make some regulation, right? But why? Why should I make some regulation that helps your company? Okay, you need you need you want more competitors in the market, right? You're going to be an extra competitor in the market and make life better for consumers. Okay, so we have to uh, try to frame the debate with the uh, governments. Okay, so some other models we mentioned briefly here, the game theory and the tummy test can also help us to predict maybe what's going to happen. 
So if we can do this better than other companies, we can have a competitive advantage. So then let's look at these companies which measure the risk. The first one is the Economic Intelligence Unit. So that is... Uh, service of, do you know The Economist magazine? Yes. Yes? So, here we can have different uh, summaries. We can see, right, they give the summary on the different countries. They make a report about all the country, and along with the headings here, politics, economy, risk, regulation, business, industry. Okay. So, of course, you have to pay money to get, this is just, we can see just some of the outside information, right? If you want to get all the information, you have to pay the money. We find all countries' information. <laughs> yes, if you pay money. So we're going to look at this one here. So, it completes internationally comparable and it regularly updates the country risk report for 100 developing and highly indebted countries. We're more interested in, in the country risk in the developing countries rather than the developed countries, right? So it makes credit rating. Do you understand credit rating? Yes. We talked about the credit rating companies before. Okay, they make the rating for the bond. Uh, <coughs> talks about the risk in finance. So here is how it structures its country risk. It has political risk of 22%. Economic policy, 28%. Economic structure, 27%. Liquidity, 23%. Liquidity is talking about can you move the money? Okay, or not? Moving the money is important. Getting credit and getting loans. So, let's have a look at each heading. What do they look at in political risk? They look at war. Is there a war in the country? Social unrest. Do you understand social unrest? social unrest. For example, in Greece, there is a lot of social unrest. <coughs> People are always on strike. Do you understand on strike? Having big demonstrations, fighting with the police. In Ireland, they have no social unrest. So who's going to get the better score from the EIU, Ireland or Greece? Ireland. So when companies are looking at which country should we invest in, which country are they going to invest in, Ireland or Greece? Ireland. Right? So this, that kind of Social unrest can have a negative impact for the country, not just on the news, but in these kind of reports, they get a lower score. Companies can make the decision not to go there. So people should try to solve the problem in the peaceful way, if they can, right? Uh, political transfer, is it done properly or not? Is there any politically motivated violence? Is anybody killed because they're a politician? Do, does the country have any dispute? So, who's going to get a better score on this one, Ireland or Korea? International dispute. Ireland. Ireland's going to get a better score, right? Who does Korea, South Korea have an international dispute with? North Korea, right? So that's going, it's not going to be that high because it's not, but just if you didn't have an international dispute, Korea would be more attractive, slightly more attractive for companies and investors, right? Uh, political risk, uh, change in government or pro-business orientation. So we could have a very, very left-wing government, okay? They're not pro-business, do you understand? They're not helping business. They're going to bring a lot of regulation, ta new taxes and so on. Can be a lower score, just a very exaggerated case, right? Bureaucracy, do you understand bureaucracy? Paperwork. I want to start a company in Ireland, it takes me. 30 days, right? Fill in the papers. I want to start a company in Cambodia. It takes me one year, right? I have to check the name is there, right? I'm not sure if that's true. I'm just making an example, right? But I have to fill out all the papers, go to the office, get the stamp, go back, check all the things, wait for two months, go back and get another paper, right? We have an E. All of these things have their own individual ranking. We have, it's called the ease of doing business ranking in the world. Some countries it's a lot easier to do business than other countries, right? So companies are going to want to go to the country with less bureaucracy where it's easier to do business. Transparency, corruption, crime. Korea, low crime, right? Good point for Korea, lower crime than the other countries. US, high crime. 
Do you know Transparency International? <laughs> Transparent, I said each of these things we can look at ease of doing business ranking. Uh, we can look at uh, Transparency International, right? <laughs> so we can see the countries get some ranking. Is the, are these rankings 100% accurate? No, each organization has their own way of making the ranking. So the EIU has their own way of ranking countries. But normally they're going to, you know, it's going to be accurate enough, right? Which country has got the uh, uh, top ranking here? Singapore, Hong Kong, New Zealand, right? Can you see? At the very top, right? So ranking, rankings on the ease of doing business, number one, Singapore. Number three, New Zealand, United States, Norway, Korea, number eight. Right? So easy to start business in Korea. Easier than Ireland. What countries it's not easy to start business? Sudan, Bolivia, Cameroon, right? Iraq. So we're getting the idea. If we look at the EIU, rankings is going to be like a little bit like in this way, right? We have Transparency International. Transparency International is the main NGO for corruption. You understand transparency? Transparency means people can see what you're doing, right? So, uh, we can check the map of the corruption by country, and we can see the colors uh, of the different countries which has a different uh, corruption, right? So, we can click on any country, uh, Mali, and it tells us their ranking, right? Rank is 115 from 172. Score, 32 from 100. So, very little transparency, okay? So, this is perceptions. Do you understand perception? They ask people, what do you think? They ask business leaders, politicians, normal people, what do you think is the chance of bribery or corruption in this country? So this is kind of not very scientific way. Just perception of people. Is this country corrupt or not? Okay. So all of this information is going into the EIU report. Do you understand? Yes. All of these factors, ease of doing business, corruption, uh, they're all going to be included, right? On the uh, Korea, may still have a little bit of an issue with corruption, right? Uh, although it's a de developed country, it's, the, it's rank is just 43rd in the world, right? So if we think there's 29 OECD countries of which Korea is a part, Korea should really be in the top 29 countries for corruption, but it's at number 43, with 55 of 100, right? Anti-bribery, enforcement, moderate. So they look at the law also, right? You know, the legal system. Are people being convicted of, of bribery or are they getting away without convictions, right? That kind of thing is all added together. So, uh, do you have any question about those points? This is included in political risk, okay? If your country has a higher intake of corruption, it may be that I might lose the contract because the government official might accept a bribe from somebody else, right? So it's included in political risk. Then we have the economic policy, trade policy. Korea is going to get a high score on trade policy. They have a lot of FTAs with other countries. Okay. Are we doing free trade or not? Okay. Exports to GDP. Korea has a high exports to GDP, right? Regulatory environment. What's our attitude towards foreign money and foreign capital? Do we have a positive attitude towards foreign money or a negative attitude? So then, after they, we just looked at these, they also have economic structure and liquidity. So then they make some kind of rating. They give your country a grade. Okay, in this case, uh, we can see here, this is the worst case we can start with. You get an E grade, right? <laughs> Severe fiscal imbalance, hyperinflation, no foreign exchange, 
On the verge of war, civil war, risk is extremely high. North Korea. Okay? <laughs> Plan B to D. Serious economic and political problems. Always defaulting on their debt. Restricted access to lending to the capital markets. A very small, just commodity uh, export base. Plan C. We have currency crisis and political problems. Okay? We are in a state of flux. We, have, we could be a big opportunity, but with caution. Okay? We saw before when we talked about the international investment, emerging economies, we can make a big profit. Sometimes they have, in just three or four years, 300% return on the stock market, right? So there's more opportunities, but also more risk. Things can change more quickly. <coughs> Rating bands B. Uh, we don't have much problems, but we have some strange economic policy or politi political structure. Okay, so we need to watch the country. And then the top grade is A. Okay, we have no problems getting loans. We have good economic policy, working government, right? No constraints. So let's just look at the uh, information we can see on the internet from this website. So, we can go to The Economist here, the EIU, EIU.com, okay, and then we click on here, they have some special reports, and then we can go into the special report, and then we can choose country. So here I chose Canada, for example. Canada, not that is Canada exciting country for country risk, or boring country for country risk? Exciting or boring country for country risk? What do you think, Canada? When we're talking about country risk, do you want to be exciting or boring? Boring. Yeah, boring? boring, right? Usually you want to be exciting, but when we're talking about country risk, it's nice to be boring. Not much is happening, right? So Canada, it has, here's their risk assessment, right? They look at the risk rating from, they give some rating on the government debt. Okay, you can download the numbers. So we looked at the different ratings. So political risk, AAA, top, no problem with politics. Economic structure, A, some little problem with, they think, they don't agree with the economics, right? Banking sector, AA, currency risk, A, sovereign risk, AA, Con total con country risk, AA. So they talk about each risk here, just briefly. Sovereign risk, the government has a surplus. Do you understand surplus? The government is taking in more money than it's spending. Okay, so, not much risk. Currency risk. The Canadian dollar had a poor year. The interest rate was cut twice and the oil price fell. Okay, so currency risk a little bit lower than the other one. Okay, banking sector risk. They're well capitalized. In the financial crisis, Canadian banking sector did well. Okay, they had some good regulation in Canada. But they have some problem with house price. House price, maybe house price bubble. A little bit, but generally good. Okay. Political risk. A new party won the parliamentary election. Okay. So it's going to be stable. So AAA. Okay. They just had an er election. Do you think people are going to have a demonstration and the Canadian government is going to change, or not? No, it never happens in Canada, right? They're going to wait. The government is going to have its full term, and they have a good majority. They have a strong, do you understand strong majority? It's not in the middle, so it's a stable situation. Economic structure, okay? Oil, oil, Canada has oil and the fall in the oil prices, okay? It's the fourth largest oil exporter in the world. That's the only thing we can see here. That's why Canada doesn't have such a good grade for economic and currency, right? Because of oil, okay? So, uh, that's about risk. We can find out about Canada's economy, politics, right, regulations in Canada, okay? Market opportunities, business environment. If we're in a certain industry, we can check the information for our own industry. Here's a, co a country, Ecuador, a little bit more exciting for country risk, right? Here's a brief, they have a brief summary about Ecuador. Ecuador's leftist president, Rafael Correa, faces increased discontent from business and the middle class, given increased taxes and his confrontational political style, although he remains popular among the poor. GDP will contract in 2015 and be weak in 2016. <coughs> Growth will resume again, but uh, remain low, right? 
Uh, so <laughs> we have some articles here, some figures about the economic growth expenditure on GDP, and then they're going to make the ranking again for the risk for Ecuador, right? But we have to sign in to see the the ranking for Ecuador, right? So here is uh, another company, but we can watch this in the next class. I can see the time is just finished. So do you have any question about the uh, EIU? You're not, you're, I know you're busy now doing your project and studying for exams. Otherwise, I would ask you to make some country risk report. You're too busy. Okay. If I, we had done this class earlier in the semester, I would ask you to make a country risk report. But anyway, it's later, so we're not going to do that. But just if you have time, you're already organized, then you can check on the internet about the EIU yourself in your own time. Okay. Let's finish there for today.